Hi, let's talk about LAN and WAN networks. LAN stands for Local Area Network. An example of LAN is office or home network. Devices on a single LAN can connect with each other and only with, with each other. And here we have an example of an office. You will have multiple computers uh, you will have all of them, assuming all of them, I'm assuming all of them are connected uh, to that uh, LAN. Uh, those, uh, ob beside computers, you will have some <coughs> uh, printers, you will have servers and other types of devices connected. And now different people working in different computers can cooperate with other people on the same network. So one person is uh, completing some sort of task on one computer and uh, can send then information, whatever results of his uh, or her uh, task is uh, sent to another computer, to another person. And that way those people can communicate and work together. They can print out results, they can access servers, or upload something to servers, uh, and so on. Basically they can, they can uh, complete some sort of task working together in a network which is called LAN local area network another very good um, example of uh, LAN local area network is your home in your home you will have multiple devices connected to the <coughs> to your network I myself uh, with my entire family, we have probably something around eight devices. We have multiple smartphones, multiple computers, smart TV, tablets, stuff like that. That's a lot of it. And um, they're all connected. You could send files from one device to another. You can, uh, your smart TV can work with one, let's say your smartphone or your tablet and um, you can you can cooperate kind of with with that you can have your some storage device you can have your local printer connected in the network and it's all working together devices on a single LAN can connect with each other using the ethernet cables and devices devices called switches ethernet switches or simply switches I'm sure you have seen uh, plenty of Ethernet cables. That's more or less how it looks like. It's terminated with RJ45. That's that plug is called RJ45. It's it's uh, a pre-made cable, so it's uh, kind of sealed in that plastic uh, kind of thing. Uh, but still, it's the same cable. It's RJ45, and. Uh, Cat5, Cat5e cable uh, connecting those RJ45s. There are basically two types of Ethernet cables which you may encounter uh, when working at home or in office. Uh, one is uh, straight through, another one is uh, crossover. Uh, when you're connecting, for instance, computer with computer, you would use crossover, uh, meaning just two, two devices connected. But if you're connecting your computer to the network, you're using straight to cable. And the same as, as with the <coughs> your office or home or office, uh, the same would be with the cameras and your uh, NVR, network the video recorder. Let's go further. That's an example of a switch or Ethernet switch however we call it, you have all those ports uh, this switch seems to have 24 ports they all also work with uh, most likely with PoE uh, well, it's, it's, uh, it says that it's, uh, it's a 1 gig uh, 1 gig uh, Ethernet and uh, let's see if it says if it's a PoE or not speed okay doesn't say doesn't matter um, 
Anyway, you, you can connect your devices to, to different ports and switch will be working like a device type of, uh, that will be connecting those devices together. LAN operates in one IP range and all the devices connected to it must be in that IP range, which is also called subnet, in order to talk with each other. I will explain IP range and subnet in another lesson. So all those devices in your office or in your home must be in the same IP range in subnet to talk with each other. Um, but what if you want, I don't know, one office to talk with another office and one office is, I don't know, in Dublin, let's say in Dublin, another one is in New York or London. So how those two LANs can talk with each other? And that's uh, what internet is used for. You see those different people, they all, each of them uh, can represent one single LAN and then you can have uh, those connections will be, uh, will be the internet connecting those, those different people. So you have person in one office talking with person with another person in, in another car with of, in office in another country, or you can have people talking, uh, uh, exchanging information between different homes, and so on. That's the internet. So what is internet? Internet is example of one, and one stands for wide area network. One connects different LANs with each other. So LAN can connect to one, with, in our case it is the internet, via a device called router. One router on LAN one can talk with another router on LAN two over the internet. That is how LANs talk with each other. They exchange information over the internet. That's an example of the some older router, router. and uh, you can see a DSL connection. That's that's your connection to the internet, or one. You can call it that way also. And there is your Ethernet switch part. All your devices will be connected to that. This may also have obviously wireless connections. So you can have some wireless devices, but this would be let's say a wired connection. And uh, from the point of your point of view, you call it router. Most people we call uh, that's my home router, uh, which provides me a network, an internet connection. But in reality, uh, it is one box, which has inside two boxes, one being router and one being switch, and they're connected together inside. That's kind of uh, physically it's a one box, but logically inside it has two boxes which one works as a switch for the network at your home or office and this works like a internet a connection to the external world and they are connected uh, with each other inside and that's how it works so um, what we're taking out of that is that we have different LANs connected with each other and exchanging information or you can have single LAN uh, like in this case, some office or home, but in our case for CCTV, this won't be computer. This will th th those will be your cameras. So you can have multiple cameras in the office connected to the LAN, or you can have multiple cameras connected to the home network. Your home network. You can have multiple cameras connected and obviously your NVR or DVR. And that way uh, you will be using that. Thank you. Let's talk more, more about Ethernet cable. CAT5, CAT5E, CAT6. This is an example of uh, CAT5 or CAT5E. I'm not sure which one was that. So you can see the uh, four pairs twisted 
copper wires and uh, each pair is in a one type of color so it's orange orange white green green white blue blue white brown brown white and on one one sleeve in one sleeve together and uh, all those cables cat5 cat5e cat6 will have those wires the difference will be the way they are twisted the, the way the cables built inside uh, because those cables uh, when when the number is growing it's cat5 will be the, the very old type of cable uh, cat5 will be more modern cat6 will be pretty pretty new cable with much higher parameters so cat5 and cat 5e consist of four pairs of twisted copper wire and maximum length of cable between devices is about 100 meters for cat5 and the speeds uh, sorry it's about 100 meters but for cat 5 and higher speeds only 37 meters is recommended so see cat 5 can handle from 10 to 100 megabits per second at 100 megahertz so if you're using those smaller speeds 100 meters is fine but if you need those speeds you you may want to have shorter distance to reduce the loss of data crosstalk and stuff like that cat 5e which is enhanced kb supports uh, up to 1000 megabits which is one gigabit per second you can connect ip cameras with cat 5 because a lot most of the even the the better the best cameras the the megabits per second are below 10 but cat 5e is recommended because especially the, the price between them is difference in the price is is negligible cat 6 it's different style it's more expensive cat 6 also consists of four pairs of twisted copper wire cat 6 has a bandwidth capacity of 250 megahertz and speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second maximum length of the cable between devices is 100 meters for one gigabit and 30 50 meters for up to 10 gigabits cat5 cable inc has inside a nylon spleen which helps to eliminate crosstalk it offers lower close crosstalk comparing with the cat5e and higher signal to noise ratio and again that's our uh, ready patch cable ethernet cable with rj45 you can see those one two three four five six eight uh, connectors yeah and these are uh, connectors which you can see you can buy a, a ready cable but those cables come let's say three one two three five meters maybe but then if you run a 50 meters cable uh, you just buy a cat 5 cat 5e in a roll and you cut it to the size and then you terminate with the rj45 on both ends <coughs> there are two general types of ethernet cables crossover and a straight through ethernet cable is terminated as i said already with rj45 which has eight pins for eight wires and they can be numbered one to eight in a straight through cable wire connected to pin one on one side is connected to the pin one on the other side as well so and the same goes for all eight pins so that's a straight through so pin one goes to pin one pin two goes to pin two and use obviously the same color the same cable in a crossover cable wires one two three and six are swapped on the other side green is swiped with orange that's a crossover cable so you can see that uh, on this side there's a pin 1 pin 2 pin 3 3 pin 4 pin 5 6 7 8 so pin 1 goes to pin 3 and this goes to pin which is uh, 6 and this one goes here and this one goes here so that that's why I call, called cross 
cross over. Basically orange is swapped with green. The blue and, and, and brown is the same. That's a crossover. A connection of an IP karma to the switch is with a straight through cable. So cable when pin 1 goes to pin 1, pin 2 to pin 2, keeping the same color. There are two types of terminations used for straight through cable. One is called T568A and the second is called T568B. And there's tiny difference between them. They basically uh, have again cables uh, brown and green swapped. I mostly use this, but it doesn't matter which one you use. You can use this type of termination or this type of termi termination. As long as you do the same type of termination on both ends of the cable. You cannot have one side of the cable this and then that, because then you get a crossover cable. You must have a, this type of termination on both both ends of the cable, or this type of termination on both ends of the cable. doesn't matter which color you use. You could create your own termination type. It wouldn't matter, really. But obviously, it's better to keep the standard. So uh, I'm using this, and most installations I've seen this, but that's in Ireland. In the UK, you may, may be using this. I don't know. Hard to say. Never done installation in the UK or US for that matter. So these are types of terminations. So pin one goes to in this type. Pin one has a uh, orange white. Pin two has orange. Pin three has uh, white green. Pin, pin four has a blue. Pin five has a uh, white blue. Pin six has a green. Pin seven has a white brown, and pin eight has eight uh, brown. <coughs> Which pins are actually used? So you have those eight wires, but in reality, they are not all used. So in CAD 5 cables, or 5E, uh, you have those four pairs, but for speeds between 10 and 100 megabits per second, ne networks only use four wires, two pairs. So wire one and two is used for sending, and wire three and six is used for receiving. So in uh, termination type T56B, it will be respectively white orange, orange, white green, and green. And if you look there, in this, 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 these wires are being used for those smaller speeds. Most of the cameras will use the above setup. For higher speeds, like 1000 megabits per second, you will use all eight, all eight wires to achieve that speed. But each pair will still have the same speed, but you double, double the speed by sending data uh, simultaneously on all those pairs. So instead of four, you're using eight. And that's why you, you increase the speed. Uh, obviously, when you're creating uh, your cable, you need your you need tools, and this is a stripper and a crimper. You basically cut your your uh, RJ45. You strip the insulation sleeve. You strip the wires, make them proper length. You stick them into the uh, RJ45 in proper order, and you squeeze it with that multiple times. I won't be showing that on the video because, well, there are countless YouTube videos with that. And uh, those people are really good and fast and they show you. It's all the same. There's no, no, no need to waste time for that. You can, you can go to YouTube and find it yourself. That's another thing which you, you will need for, for networks. A tester. And it's a basic, basic tester. So, for instance, let's assume that you're creating that uh, uh, 50 meter wire. You put your strip the plug, uh, the cable, or put in the plugs, crimped, you terminated the cable. So now to avoid the uh, uh, confusion, if something will not be working once you get everything set up, you test the cable. So you 
Uh, one of them is receiver and one is the sender. And we can have a look the, on the side of that. See, the, there's sender, sorry, uh, sender, receiver. <coughs> you just plug your cable there and there. And you set it for test. And we'll start testing wire by wire. So if it shows white, green, on, sorry, on the number one, you will have green, you should get the green there. If you get the green there, you should get green there. And we'll just go through every cable. If it is a straight through cable, you get one for one, two for two, three for two, uh, three, four for four, and so on. If it's cross over, obviously, for certain wires you will get different wires you will not get number one for number if you look back to to the crossover cable but you, we are not using crossover cables for cameras only straight through so this will tell you if every, every core is working if there's a short or a wire is broken or you just wired them improperly so it's a good uh, rule to test the cable before connecting. When you, once you make the cable, terminate the cable, it's already there, just hanging on the one side beside the camera, on the side beside the NVR. Just connect that tester or whatever tester you get, which are cheap, you can get them plenty of them on the Amazon and uh, check if your cable is actually working. Because that way, if something is not working, you know already the cable is working. Thank you. Hi. What is IP address and what is MAC address? IP address, an internet protocol address, is a numerical label assigned to each device on the LAN or WAN. For example, on a computer, printer, camera, NVR, DVR, basically on any device that uses internet protocol. It is a logical address on a layer tree. That's how it's called also. We will explain those layers a little bit later. But you won't be going to, in, too deep into that and because uh, you, you don't really need that information for the <coughs> for setting up IP cameras. Example of the IP address version 4, 183.124.10.3. You've seen probably plenty of different IP addresses already. MAC address, a media access control address has nothing to do with Apple, just so you know. <laughs> it's a unique number assigned to every device with network interface controller, so-called NIC. It's basically every device that is connected to internet will have an interface through which it can connect. Could be that in the camera, could be in the DVR, and VR, in your computer, in your smartphone. Each of those devices will have that controller and then controller we have a media access control address which is unique for every device there's no two the same but we shouldn't be let's assume that's not it is a physical address in the layer 2 and it's also called a physical uh, it's called physical address in the layer 2 or physical address of the device it consists of 48 bits 6 bytes and consists of two parts, each 24 bits. The first is organizational unique identifier, 24 bits, and the vendor assigned address, 24 bits. An example you have below, one, two, three, that's uh, some vendor, and that's the device itself. So basically, uh, each vendor will, will have, will have certain ranges of those, like Apple, Microsoft, I don't know, Hike Vision, Dahua, and so on. And then each device will have its own. And that way, a uh, switch can identify which device is which. And that's just very quick overview of the OSI model. OSI model is data processing model. So in every camera, for instance, or computer, you will have those all layers happen. So you have application, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, and then you have network, data link, and a physical. 
So that's kind of, a, for instance, let's look at the computer. You're sending an email. So you are interacting with the application on the computer. And that application then interacts with further parts coming down to the assigning IP address of that <coughs> computer, then creating the switch layer with the uh, MAC addresses. As you remember that Nick has a MAC address, yeah? So when computer will have MAC, uh, IP will have a, a MAC address, and then comes down to the cable. So you, do, you have a socket on the back of the computer, which is connected. You're sending email, you start it from there, and the whole system is transporting all that to that to that internet uh, internet cable. And it goes to over the network, and maybe you're just sending this to another person the same LAN, or maybe it goes over the internet, and then somebody is receiving that email, but it obviously it starts from that layer. So it, your cable is connected to the device on the, some other place and is being uh, kind of peeled off, let's call it, like an onion, and gets to the application on the, and then somebody sees on the screen the email. And the same with the camera. You have a picture and it's all transformed through those layers and at the end you have a cable uh, <coughs> connected to the camera. And then this goes over the network to the DVR and VR, and it's transformed to different different direction. So the transformation happens that direction or that direction. So this when you're sending, and this direction when you're receiving data. And this part is also you can f you can see the physical network. So you have routers, you have a switches, and you have a cables. So that's just for information. We won't be going into in data encapsulation and stuff. Um, how it happens, how it's being recognized, you know, TCP, IP protocol, handshakes, and stuff like that. So we will leave that alone. Why do we need private IP addresses? Uh, and I explain what what they are in a moment. So why do we, we have on the plan on our planet, it's like there would be another planet, some other people living there, but on our planet there's like 7 billion people. And basically almost everybody now, almost, I'm not talking about some Africa, but almost everybody will have a device. And some people have more than one device. Then you have offices with multiple devices. So uh, billions of devices and IPv internet protocol which is for internet protocol with address with four um, numbers has only about four billions addresses so if we would go that way <coughs> we would run out of, the, of those addresses that was also the reason why the IPv6 was uh, invented, but it's not like fully introduced yet, only in some places, which has 340 undecillion, which I don't know that number really, <laughs> uh, 340 undecillion, which is supposed to be 340 billion, billion, billion addresses, billion, four billion times. So it's unimaginable number of addresses that's ipv6 but to not use this because you would have to change certain programs and stuff to read uh, those addresses people invented something what's called private ip addresses and as you remember those lands and ones so each lan is using private ip, uh, <coughs> IP address and private IP addresses uh, could be uh, that there um, are three different basically uh, uh, sets of them, but two are mostly used. It's 10 dot something dot something dot something or 192 dot 168 dot something dot something. This has a lot of addresses. This is only because of you see the combination. This, this one has less addresses available. 
in most places you will see that for big organizations they often use that because they they want to have don't, don't want to mix uh, local addresses between the offices and stuff but it doesn't really matter so those addresses will be used only on LANs they can that, that cannot be used <coughs> over the internet if you type in the internet one of those addresses it will go nowhere they're not routable they're only valid in your local area network LAN and uh, you can use them as you as you wish uh, because they're not uh, are unique but only unique on your land so your neighbor can have the same address as you because he has different on a different land and you connect can connect with him only through the internet to the one so uh, the range is uh, the one range is 10 0 0 0 to 10 to 5 to 5 to 5 5 there's that another range which is rarely used you will most likely encounter this or encou encounter this so 192 168 00 to 192 168 and as i said they're using land are not routable they're locally working locally so you can have another office with exactly the same ip addresses uh, you can pick whichever of them you want nobody will will tell you anything they cannot be accessed directly via internet but only via NAT network address translation and I'll explain what it is <coughs> there's no central management as I said you can use whatever address you want so in general you cannot access those addresses but there is a protocol in the router which helps us to do that can which is called network address translation but we will talk about it public IP addresses they are all they're using one on the internet they're unique across the world there is an in or international organization internet assigned numbers authority which will can assign those addresses to different organizations and, and, and businesses and so on that that's why it's called public you, you can access and your router will have uh, both you have unique uh, public address and you will have address from your local network how to set an IP address in a device there are two ways there's something what is called DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol it's it is a protocol that enables a server to automatically assign an IP address to a computer or you can set it manually so type in the computer and tell a computer what address it's supposed to have so uh, if you connect your camera dvr nvr a computer to the network and your computer and, and that device is set to dhcp inside moment it connects uh, the router which manages or some some dhcp server which is different from the router but most cases it is a router will detect this device and will assign to the device uh, IP address and the device will accept it so if you connect a device which has set which is set for DHCP to the network it will automatically automatically acquire that network uh, that IP address and when you log into the device you will see that it already has it or you can do this manually so you have untick the box in the settings that it uh, that you don't want to use DHCP but you want to do manual so for cameras and nvrs dvrs we mostly use manual but we may initially use the hcp just to detect what addresses are, are what addresses available but then we change to manual to manual because we don't want this address to change but i will explain this in another lesson what is an ip address range or subnet <coughs> so IP address version 4 consists of four numbers for instance one one nine, I'm talking here about private <coughs> excuse me for instance we have 192.168.10.11.11 so with this will be associated subnet mask and in 90% 99 
0.9% of installations, you will see that type of mask only. 255, 255, 255, zero. What it means, that this doesn't change, this, this doesn't change, and this doesn't change, only this changes. So what again it means, that this is your subnet, or this is your IP range, and only this number changes depending on the device on your LAN. So how many devices maximum it could have? 0 to 255, so it's 256. But it's less than that because we don't really use 255 for some reasons. I won't be going to that now. And let's assume 256, 256 devices. So again, in this case, this is your range. 192.168.10. So when you have cameras working together with the DVR and VR, and you're connecting laptop, they all have to have the same range to talk with each other. Thank you. In IP TCP protocol, we use ports. And there are different things than the ports on the switch, as I was mentioning before, I think. Uh, port numbers range from 0 to 665,000, uh, more or less, but only ports with numbers 0 to 1,023 are reserved for privileged services and designate as well as well-known ports. There is a list of most known ports that you use every day without knowing. Or well, maybe you know, but let's assume, assume that you don't. So you have port HTTP port 80. Every time you type some website in your browser, browser is using port 80. If you're going to a website which has SSL connection, secure, using port, using port 443. If you're sending files to the FTP protocol, using port 21. If you're receiving emails, which are PO, on a POP3 account, using port 110. If you're using IMAP, it's one port 143. If you're using IMAP on secure connection, it's port 993. So as you can see, there's lots of those ports which you're using every day without knowing about them. But your computer, your, your system which you're using smartphone knows them. One very important use of ports is in NAT. Network, NAT is network address translation. And that thing happens in a router. As I was explaining to you before, if uh, you have your LAN, and then you have another LAN in another city and country, let's say, and then for them to talk with each other, <coughs> you need a WAN and a router. A router which connects you to the WAN, which could be internet, and a router. But how router, and, and a router is kind of a gateway between this private and public networks. And a network address translation is necessary because on one router we have only one public address. And there will be multiple devices with different internal addresses connecting to that router. So router must somehow uh, store information, which device requested that information, and then when a uh, response is coming from the internet, must send this response to that, to that um, device. And that's why a uh, router is using network, network address translation and it's creating something what is called a NAT table. <coughs> so basically, you have that uh, some internal device sending request to some, this is I think uh, some IP from Google. So it sends to the router, which that's the gateway, which is router address. So that IP sends to that router request that it wants something from that website. Uh, so router stores requests in the NAT table and appends ports. So it gives that IP, adds the port at the end, and then you have <coughs> a request going to the um, external uh, public IP with that port. And then when 
answer comes, router has this information stored and is able to, when it gets answer from that, send it to that particular device for that particular uh, um, system. The, why you need router if you have device? Because on this device, let's say it's computer, you can have multiple different processes. You can have browsers, you can have emails, you can have FTPs. Uh, countless things can be happening. That's why you need ports. Then that information, port is basically additional uh, specification on address. Like you have <coughs> address city, country city, street, and uh, let's say it's apartment block and you have a gate number but then you need apartment number and that would be the port so this will be full address with the gate and this would be your apartment number in that particular gate in the apartment block something like that that's probably the, the best analogy i can give you And as I said, with this information to that uh, from its public, then the uh, answer comes uh, from that device to that public, and the router translates that information to the internal device. But why it is relevant for a contemporary CCTV? Because as I remember, as I, remember, as I said, I don't want to go into depth with networks. I just want to say whatever we need to know for our IP systems, CCTV systems. <coughs> so why it is relevant? Contemporary DVRs and NVRs can be accessed from apps and remote computers via the, in the, in uh, the internet to view the cameras. It can, you can have requests coming, uh, some monitoring station can be connected to your, to your DVR and VR or in business DVR and VR and happens remotely through the internet. So DVR and the ONVR has a po uh, sorry has an IP address in uh, uh, private then the router knows which it is and what's happening you you there's that NAT table in the router you can add positions to that router in the NAT table and tell the router that if request comes to that IP with particular port, they should send it to the another port in the DVR or NVR. So uh, in DVR and NVR, you have set certain port which will be used. Usually, it's called server port, which is used for external requests. Uh, so you in your router you program and then an um, application which is sending requests from will be app or remote computer will also have some use some port so in the router you tell that if it comes to its uh, if you receive it will receive the information coming from the port x you will translate it to the device Y, why? Sorry, <laughs> device Y uh, and port, whatever port, different port is set there. They, they don't have to be the same port, like on a request from the um, request from the application and the server port on the DVR or NVR. But that's what it used for. That's why we need to know about it, because when those requests come from the external applications, they will use port and the router will then translate it to the proper port on uh, our DVR and VR. And that's all what we need to know. This could be, uh, <coughs> you have, for instance, a service called uh, High uh, Connect, uh, which is using external, uh, you can, through which you can, you can connect to your, to your DVR and VR through the, from the apps. Or you often, you in many cases, you have a monitoring station monitoring a particular business, and an alarm happens, and they go log into the DVR and VR, and, and they just go to the cameras to see what is happening. Thank you. Hi. What is DNS, domain name server?
and again why do we need it for IP karma systems it's a little bit similar uh, the reason for that is similar to the one for ports domain name DNS which is domain name servers are the kind of internet's phone book so it's a list of addresses of domain names uh, how it works when you uh, So basically, each domain is associated with uh, domain name is associated with the IP address, and the uh, domain name servers they they hold uh, they keep those those uh, the domain the, they keep record of that. So you when you go on your computer and you browse and you go to Google site or Yahoo or whatever, um, you remember the domain name. You type the domain name, but your computer doesn't care about domain name. When you type the domain name computer connects to the DNS server uh, and finds the IP address for that uh, domain the best IP uh, sorry the best domain name servers would be Google or open DNS Google is probably the fastest uh, it's basically two IP addresses where the those servers are and there are some other ones as well now, so again, why a CCTV engineer should know about DNS? Because external services like Hike Connect store IP of your DVR and VR and are, co and are accessed via web address, domain name. So your DVR must be able to connect to them. So if you, if you, so your DVR and VR, if you have stored just a, <coughs> a domain name in it for that service, it must also know where the DNS servers are so you can go he, he can go to that IP address the reason for DNS servers is because although your domain may be still the same like google.com for instance but the IP addresses often change so you type the uh, domain name or DVR will send information to the domain name but because of the DNS servers, uh, either your browser or the DVR will know the current IP address of the domain. And basically that's what it is. That's the DNS. Is. It stores the information where the domain is, the IP address, the current IP address. And that's why we need it for the NVRs and DVRs. Thank you. Hi. Let's go farther into networks and talk about routers and switches. Routers connect two or more, or more being like in Taiwan, logical subnets, local networks, LANs, and it's also called layer 3 switch. U router is using IP addresses for data transmission. So routers, uh, uh, what router is interested, from which IP address information comes and to which it goes, and has something what's called IP address table, so it knows from uh, where the information was uh, was sent. A router is connected to LAN. Uh, sorry, when router is connected to LAN, it has two IP addresses. One private, which is called gateway, and very often it's just number one. So you have uh, your IP range like 192.168 and let's say 30, and then it's dot one. And that's your gateway. <coughs> and then I have a second address, which is public. <coughs> so it's because it works like a gateway between the LAN and one because between the LAN and the internet so when dealing with IP cameras you will do very little work with routers except setting up NAT table which which we already uh, which we have already discussed for your device like karma the VR and VR to be able to connect to the router you must set in it a proper subnet the same as router as we already discussed what is a subnet what is the IP range and uh, and that's every device on the LAN has to have the same range and you're setting up the, the IP range uh, sorry you're setting IP for your for your device uh, you be must be in the same range you, you must use the mask and you use the default gateway which as I said usually is one so you have uh, your range and the number one and as I said, default gateway is simply a root address of your router. And now, uh, network address translation enables private IP networks to connect to the internet. 
has other networks. NAT operates in a router and connects two networks together. I have explained NAT in a lesson about IP addresses. <coughs> That's example of some old, old home router. You have a DSL connection which connects you to internet and you have an internet uh, connections which is a switch. Switches connect two or more devices within one single LAN local area network. Devices in the same IP range or subnet, depends how you call it, via internet cable. And it's also called layer to switch. Switches use MAC addresses for data transmission. So uh, let's say switch receives the information from and, uh, and creates something what is called MAC table, MAC address table. And uh, so information came from the address that and it should go to address that. And that information is inside the data stream to which address it goes and from which it comes. And switch is storing information on which port which ha it has which address. That's a PoE switch. Uh, what we are here, switch. This example of PoE switch, you see those two lights. See one cable, this one is disconnected, it's can be pulled out, but each is which is connected fully, plugged in, it has two LEDs. With PoE switches, one LED uh, says that data works, and assuming that's flashing, if it's solid, it's something wrong. Or it can have, uh, and the second LED is for PoE. So some cables on a switch will have no LEDs, like this one, disconnected. We have one LED just for data. Or if this device is using PoE, there will, there will be also another LED light up. And I cannot tell you which color is which, because different makes of switches will use different colors. Usually it's something yellow, green, uh, orange. Um, but which is PoE, you have to look at the manual or description on the panel, <coughs> which will tell you which is. So if you have computer connected properly, it will have only one LED and assuming that's working. And when it's disconnected, there will be no LED. But if you have a camera with PoE and it's working properly, you will have two LEDs. One is flashing, one solid. There is also something what's called managed switches, programmable. They can handle more than one LAN local area network. And this is called virtual LAN, VLAN. And uh, it is achieved by assigning different switch ports to different VLANs. So this switch can be programmed. You can program port parameters and you can program to which VLAN it belongs, which IP range, let's call it that way. Devices on, t even if devices, if you have one switch and you have multiple devices, but you have two VLANs and those devices are on that, are on that one switch, but they are on different VLANs, they cannot talk with each other through that switch despite being on the physically on the same device, but logically done on two different devices. So that switch, which is a single device, logically works like two completely separate switches. Uh, VLANs are very good for the, like on a big, uh, for if you have big, bigger customers, they, they will have different networks, they network dividers for different functions. For instance, you will have a uh, network the dedicated to cameras, another network dedicated to, to phones, another network, let's say, dedicated to general use, like connecting to internet, and may have some other also functions, uh, different networks to, for different functions. But very often you will, on those bigger installations, you have something like that, which are managed, which, but those companies, usually they won't let you touch it. Uh, they will tell you which port you can use on which switch, and that's it. And they will tell you, and, and you, you can use whatever range you want. But they won't you, they won't let you program that. And in most installations I do, I've seen, uh, we don't use them. <coughs> so most IP cameras installations deal only with unmanaged switches and one or maximum two networks. Why two networks? Because some of the NVRs have two LANs, one for the cameras, and, one, and second for communicating with the office. They kind of separate two. 
Well, obviously, in NVRs, we have just one LAN, so your cameras will be on the same network like, like computers in the office. But some NVRs uh, are a little bit smarter. They have two LANs, they have two ports at the back, and you uh, cam com connect camera to one of them, uh, cameras, and uh, you connect the NVR to the office network to the other one. And they will, they'll have completely different ranges. That's, that's kind of security feature. As I said previously, installations for bigger clients may include VLANs and you may have to be connecting to manage switches and you will be connecting cameras to, to the network. It won't be your network. That's again some Ethernet switch. <coughs> Unmanaged Ethernet switches are very simple devices. They have no settings, nothing has to be programmed. All you can do, you can power up, power down, you can connect or disconnect Ethernet cables or patch cables, however you call them. The only requirement is that your devices are in the same IP range subnet for that thing to work, that local area network. And those, I say, so, so those unmanaged switches are very simple. Once you understand that you must be in the same range, it's very easy to, to work with them. So switches are not only simple to manage, but also easy to expand. If your switch doesn't have enough ports, Ethernet sockets, and you cannot replace it for whatever reason, I don't know, client won't let you. You can expand it by simply connecting another switch via Internet cable, straight to cable. In that manner, you can also place switches in multiple locations in your building to have short connection to your cameras. So you have PoE cameras and you have that limitation up to 100 meters and building is big, multiple floors and floor plan is really large. So you can have <coughs> one switch on, on which floor, each floor, and excuse me, and one in the comms room. And then on each floor cameras connected to that switch on that floor. And then that, that switch from the floor connected to the main switch in the comms room. And that way your distance between the switches and the cameras and switches will be below, way below 100 meters. Just make sure that you have a plan and look and you have all the locations of your equipment marked. I've been on installations where it was just madness that nobody knew where the equipment was. And most of the time I wasted just, just looking for the equipment, trying to find where the switch is. So I see that I will, it's very easy to find find the comms room. And then, if, you know, some, uh, I won't even say what it was because it's, it's just ridiculous. But anyway, after a few hours, we found those switches. Okay, that's what I can say. I don't want to tell you anything more about it. So make sure that you have all the locations marked. There's some plan, building plan, and you have marked where the switches are, where the cameras are, where the power supplies are. Just make sure about that. Thank you. Hi, let's talk about PoE, power over internet. So PoE switch, we talked about it already a little bit, but let's go deeper into the subject. Again, we need it because you will be using this on a daily basis. Here we have an example of the PoE switch. As I explained before, one LED is for the data and one is for PoE. So what is a PoE? It's a power over internet. The original standard, IEEE 802.3AF, provides up to 15 watts of DC power per port. The newer standard, 802.3AT, it's called PoE Plus also, provides up to 30 watts per port of DC power. Power in general is provided over two pairs of wires only. <coughs> and there are two modes, mode A and mode B. Mode A uses wires 1, 2, 3, 4. So these are exactly in the lower speeds internet, at internet. These are the exact same wires as the data goes. So the power, go <coughs> power goes on the same wires as the data, for the, as I'm saying, for the lower speeds. <coughs> Where for the mode B, power goes over just the exactly the other 
wires, those which are not being used for the data in those lower up to 100 megabits speeds. So those are those two uh, types of two modes of sending power. Again, original standard PoE 15 watts. It's enough for the camera. As as you remember, we had 12 volts power and um, about 300 milliamps. And this PoE, uh, we will explain what voltage is, is coming to the PoE uh, 15 watts. <coughs> So again, original 15 watts, newer PoE plus 30 watts, and two modes of transmission using the same wires as data or the opposite. And again, this is the mode A, cable 1, 2, 3, and 6, and these are exactly those which I use for the data on the up to 100 megabits, as I already explained. Latest uh, standard, PoE standard, uh, allows for as far as 60 to 100 watts of power. And it's called 802.3BT. Can be used for PTZ. Again, remember, PTZ requires more power because it has motors. The, the thing is moving around in all directions. So it's logical that it requires more powers. More, sorry, more power. Power for this standard is provided over four wires so you have four wires going uh, with plus and four wires going with minus positive and negative you must remember that every poe switch has also a total maximum power so you let's say that your port it says that it has 60 watts per port and for the for the port so you can connect to port device which has 60 watts and let's assume this is 10 ports, so it's 600 watts, yeah? Let's assume it's 10 ports, just for easy calculation. So total would be six, but then in your manual you read that switch can only provide 500 watts in total. That means that you cannot have more than eight ports connected to only eight ports you can have connected devices which drain 60 watts. And you can have two ports, let's say for computers or something else. So you have to be also always aware that fact that each port can provide 60 watts doesn't mean that the entire device can provide, uh, you know, if you multiply number of ports by 60. You have to check the maximum power for the device. PoE PoE range is about 100 meters, and it's not a limitation of PoE. It's a network limitation. But you can have additional injectors, you can have additional devices and so on. <coughs> as, as I said before, you can have those multiple switches uh, and some of them can be pretty close to your location of the de uh, actual device being the camera. PoE is, is injected at a voltage between 44 and 57 volts DC and typically it's 48 volts. If your device uses standard 48 volt PoE, being standard AF, AT, BT, it is called active PoE. But there are also devices called using passive PoE, and, and passive PoE is, is any is device which is using any PoE which is not according to the standard. So it's not standard AO2.3AF, AT or BT, it's something else. And most common uh, voltage and PoE I have found, I met on, on doing my install, was 24 volts. And for instance, Lego Wave Ethernet Radio Bridge is using 24 volt PoE. So it's called passive. Sorry. Yeah, it's called passive. Active PoE is when you have uh, 40 old, 48 volts with those standards. And what also happens, you have to understand, uh, that both camera and the switch detect each other. And, and switch will know which this device needs a PoE. So you want, if you connect, um, <coughs> you have a PoE switch, 
and you're connecting to that switch device which doesn't use PoE, you want to damage the device. That's the simple explanation to that. Because your, de your device and switch would dis exchange quickly information and the switch will not apply PoE power to that device. Despite being, that's why you, I, you, you, I will remember I was showing that that switch, and you had those uh, ports which wouldn't be using PoE, despite this being PoE. So it's not uh, uh, applied automatically. It is automatically in the sense that you don't have to do anything. You just plug in the plug, but it won't apply the power to the device which is, does, doesn't require that PoE. Often, the, 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 the voltage also is negotiated. Most cameras work with the Type A PoE, which is Y1236, with 48 volts. So what is the advantage of the PoE? Single inexpensive cable from NVR to camera. You don't need power cable, you don't need power supplies, you just switch and the camera and the cable. If you're using NVR with built-in switch, so well, you have ports for multiple cameras on the back of the v NVR, which we'll be talking, um, which we'll, we'll be talking about it as well. Uh, you don't even you don't even need a switch, so no need for a local power supplies. Easy installation and maintenance. That's uh, that. These are advantages of PoE. Thank you. Hi, this is Darius from IP Camera Helper. And today <coughs> we'll be talking about um, changing IP address of your computer or laptop. Uh, this has to be performed pretty often when we connect into the network, some local network, because obviously the, those networks will have different uh, ranges and, and so on. So we do this in the following way. Uh, sorry, not this. Uh, we're going to search. <coughs> we look for a, a control panel. We click control panel. In control panel, we go to video network status and tasks and uh, change adapter settings, local area connection properties. And in this, we'll be going to that. But before we do that, just we have to do one more thing uh, we have to go to command prompt to see what we have at the moment there. So we go to CMD, open CMD, in CMD we uh, type IP, sorry, IP config, enter, and this will tell us exactly what IP we have currently. So this is our internal network, uh, the private site. Uh, our IP is 192.168.192.21 Obviously network range, uh, network subnet is 192.168.192 uh, Subnet is 255.255.255.0 And default gateway 192.168.192.1 uh, This part is our external uh, IP So this is how the router uh, will be presenting itself when we search the internet When we go to some website or something else this IP that we see. So let's leave it for a moment. Now we change our IP. We click on the Internet Protocol version 4 because we're using not a six uh, digit uh, uh, but four digit IP. We click that, we choose use the following IP and we do and we type 192 168 192 again and some um, new IP for this computer. Let's make it 122. Subnet will populate automatically and default gateway is 192.168.192.1. That's, uh, uh, as you remember, default gateway for our uh, router. Let's click OK and OK again. And this should change. So now we go again to command prompt. We type again IP config enter. And so as you can see, our IP on our network was changed to 122. 
keeping the same uh, subnet or range, whichever way we call it. Uh, obviously, that, and that's basically how we do that. I just go back to whatever I was using, uh, as I don't want to keep it that way. We just let it stay as it was. So we go there, and it, it will allow automatically obtain using the DHCP. <coughs> And if we go again to IP config, well, we find that our IP is changed back to whatever our system remembers, uh, our router remembers. And that's basically how we do that. Thank you. Hi, in this lesson, I want to talk about command prompt, prompt tool, which you have on your laptop or your uh, computer find it you, you click search you type CMD and, and you just click that uh, uh, that element here and um, a slightly small uh, I think there was something I can uh, don't select screw minimize close just trying to find there is a way to properties I'm just looking for a, a cursor size large font we want to be bigger 28 maybe fine okay perfect now we can see exactly what is happening so basically you will be using two commands there is more obviously you can use plenty of commands and you can search it online but two which you will be using very often is uh, IP config which give you a uh, IP config of your laptop computer so let's say you come to the site you're doing the installation uh, and you're using day network and you have no idea what the IPs are and so on but you know that this particular computer is connected to the network so what you do you p you type ip config and you just press enter and as in another lesson you will find out that that's your ip config so this is the ip address of that particular computer that's a subnet that's a default gateway which is a address of your router on the private side of the network this is your address of the router on the public network and that's it and you have it and at the same time you have your uh, version of for ipv6 but we don't use it really so that's uh, the first command which you will be using but then obviously there is another command which in which you uh, may try the de if the device which is online uh, has uh, if it's working so for instance you know the IP address on the network of your IP camera and you use command called ping ping space and you type the IP address of that camera 192 in this case 168.192 and I think it was 53 when we did that camera Let's see what happens works um, <clears throat> so you can see that uh, it's telling you it's pinging with 32 bytes of data and you have four packets sent received four lost zero so it means that device is working properly so they were, uh, this computer was able to send the data and receive back the information okay let's try another one I know there is uh, another 192.168.192 dot I think for free and that's another device on the on the network which is working you can see the packets packet sent four received four lost zero everything's working let's try some random IP ping but on the network I 
thing it's raining. 192, 168, 192. Uh, let's make it, yeah, I don't know, 99. And it's trying to ping. The snake she holds unreachable. And it's trying for times because it's sending for packets. Okay. Packets sent, packets lost. What? Ah, sorry. But uh, yeah, sent and received, but it's unreachable. So. Yeah, and I can see that's the reply from this computer, as you remember. Where is it? That's the address of our computer. So what you're getting here, you're getting reply, but it's reply not from IP you're pinging, but IP reply from IP from which you are pinging. So basically that IP, that computer is telling you that this destination, destination is unreachable. So you didn't didn't get it true. It's a different story when there's a problem with connection and uh, it won't, uh, it's not reachable because there's no such a, we don't, there's no device on that. Basically that's how it works. And uh, as I said, there's my, many more commands than that, but uh, in most cases, that's what you will be using. You will ping the device to see if it's uh, you can reach it over the network, uh, meaning network uh, cable works and device itself itself works. Obviously, the very good once you know the IP, you can also go to the um, browser. Oh, sorry. You can go to the browser and uh, in that browser you can. Uh, type the IP address and if you get to the login page obviously you will you will you know that the device is working but sometimes uh, there's a situation there's a situation that uh, there's a problem with communication so that's that's the way to to check it and this uh, command uh, IP config it will tell you exactly what type of IP address you are on and what is your subnet and what is your IP range thank you